Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club, delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods. Discover great brands for every hobby every single month. Seriously, there are so many boxes for coffee, whiskey, knives, grilling, tech, and the outdoors men and women. And in my opinion, one of the biggest appeals is that the stuff in the box is made by smaller brands. Every box has at least $70 in value, but only costs $45. Become an alchemist and mix yourself a stiff drink for your next D&D session. Don't go adventuring without the Explore box. The headlamp is way more fun than it should be. Couple that with the Terra box's bare bones ultimate tool and let nothing stand in your way. This thing is legit hefty. Cut, dig, hammer, intimidate your foes. It does it all. Take the quiz that will determine what's inside your boxes and start getting great stuff. And even after the quiz, if you don't like the box, pick a different one. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month, and before it's shipped you'll get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip the month entirely for no charge. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter all things D&D 20 at checkout, or go to bspk.me slash all things D&D 20. And now what you're here for. Dad DM runs the Orphan Village, a false Hydra story. Hi everyone. All Things D&D is back with another story. I love a horror campaign, and I especially love a false hydra. And this story does not disappoint on either front. Tell us your epic horror campaign tales, or how you ran a false hydra, after listening to this one. I've been a fan of RPGs for a long time, and became aware of D&D as I got older, but never had a chance to play. Fast forward to the age of critical role, and I caught the bug. But now, I have a 12 and 7 year old sons with active imaginations. So, I dove into DMing and trying my best to make sure they had a good time. I'm a bit of a writer, and knew enough about D&D lore that we fleshed out some solid backstories for our characters that they were really excited about. We kicked off Lost Minds of Fandelver with my oldest son's tiefling sorcerer, Shuet, chosen champion of a silver dragon, my youngest son's human paladin, Sir Sam, son from a noble family, and my tabaxi rogue, Yen Miao, an orphan saved by my youngest son's father and given purpose. We played a few sessions of that before my oldest son kept wanting to do his own thing, even though he was very much into it when we played and talked about what he wanted to do the next session. After several weeks of my oldest not wanting to participate, my youngest asked if we could just play without him. I didn't want to replace his character or play him myself, because I wanted him to have ownership over it still, in case he did want to play. So I started a new campaign with just my youngest and myself. We talked about what we wanted out of it, and he wanted to start in the future, from the initial campaign, and wanted the chance to meet our original characters. So I said it's 70 years in the future, so that our originals were too old to participate in fights and other major threats had time to develop. I also knew which campaigns I wanted to take them through originally, and had developed enough of the loose storylines that I thought I could pull more detailed encounters but still be vague enough to allow for going back to the original campaign and allow for surprises. We kicked off this campaign with a session zero set five years before the main story, and played an ogre in his cake with our characters as 12-year-olds. His character is an Air Ganassi monk, Shadow, and mine is a tiefling bard, Alex. The big easter egg in this session being a silver locket they found in the Hippogriff Nest, which is written in as part of that adventure, but blends in well for the False Hydra arc. We live in a village full of orphans, and there's only one person over the age of 18, the elderly deaf baker Miss Rosie. There are only a handful of people we know who are older, and they left the village when they were between 15 and 17. If you're familiar with an ogre and his cake, you'll know there's a friend that's about to go off to wizard school, Mass, and that there's a traveling zoo that comes through. My character Alex goes off to apprentice with the Harper Bard in the following months. The three friends keep up a pen pal relationship between visits. Fast forward to present day, and Mass is due back for their shared 17th birthday party back in their home village, Alex having arrived the day before. Mass arrives late that night, near collapsing off of her horse barreling into town. Her two friends had convinced her to make a short adventure to the Sunless Citadel, Tales from the Yawning Portal, to check out where this weird fruit comes from. They get close, but goblins grab her friends, and she's able to get away and go get help. That adventure concludes, but her friends are cursed by the Gultheus tree, and a powerful cleric might be able to help. Lo and behold, a powerful cleric NPC, Lady Pike, from the original campaign lives in Fandelver, but that's a trek of several days. Friends get helped, and they run into Yin Miao, 
who still tends the old adventurer's estate and businesses and charities. Being an orphan himself, he's surprised that a large group of orphans has gone unnoticed, since that has been his main charity of choice for the last 70-odd years, and so he decides to investigate. Now, on to the false hydra. Yen Miao and Lady Pike returned with Shadow, Alex, and Mass to their home village. Yen Miao wanted to make sure the orphans were well cared for, and there was a mystery afoot that needed to be solved. How did a village of 50 to 60 orphans go unnoticed by someone who had spent their life caring for orphans all along the Sword Coast? The village seemed well cared for, and the children were in good spirits. The children all seemed to be going about doing the jobs you would normally expect their parents to do, the lone exception being Miss Rosie, the elderly deaf caretaker who ran the bakery and helped make sure that the kids always had a good meal. Miss Rosie recalled coming to the village many years ago to set up a bakery, but she soon found herself as the default caretaker of the orphans, who treated her like a beloved grandmother. Very interesting, Yen Miao observed. But why did you think it was a good idea to set up a business in a village full of orphans? The bakery itself was fully functional and well-maintained. As Shadow translated the question into sign language between the two, Miss Rosie drew a puzzled expression across her face as she searched for an answer. It's been a while, but maybe I've forgotten a detail or two. I'm not too certain why I came here almost thirty years ago. She stared off into the distance, and her hands began fumbling for the words that seemed out of reach. It's all right. Don't worry about it too much. Let me know if you need anything. Yin Miao gave her a comforting grasp and moved on to other parts of the village. Shadow made sure to stop and show Yin Miao the statues of the Slayers of Tiamat that the village had in their town square. Yen Miao stood silently for a moment before Gary the Goblin's statue and remembered the bravery of his long-deceased friend. They next made their way to Shadow's home and began to search for clues. Lady Pike searched the bedrooms and asked, Why do you have these extra clothes? They've always been there, probably just left over from the orphans that have been through here before, Shadow guessed. Lady Pike noticed some items turned down on the fireplace mantel. What about this family portrait? Who are these people? She noticed Shadow, Alex, and Mass all squint and shake their heads. What are you talking about? What portrait? She took a moment and held the picture in front of Shadow's face, forcing him to focus on nothing but the picture as she coached him on where to look. After a moment and successful wisdom save, Shadow's vision came into focus as he saw a small painting of five air ganasi, seemingly two parents and three children. He recognized himself as the youngest, Almost as soon as the picture was moved away, the memory faded, and it was as if it had never happened to him. Lady Pike also noticed a silver locket hanging near the door and opened it, though the children's perception didn't show it. She handed it to Mass and asked her to open it. Lady Pike saw her open it, but Mass felt like it was stuck. After another moment of coaching her through it, and a successful wisdom save, Mass opened it to see two small pictures of sisters, one of them looking like she does now. We found that in the woods five years ago. Alex exclaimed. Does that mean the younger sister is Mass, that the older one is a sister? I've never had a sister. Mass trailed off in disbelief. The moment once again was forgotten, soon after the locket was handed back to Lady Pike. Lady Pike looked to Yen Miao and said, There's foul magic here. She then turned back to the children and asked if there were any written records they could look through. The only records they could think of were the letters they had written to each other over the years, and Lady Pike asked if she could read them. It didn't take long before she came across talk of brothers, sisters, and parents. Each stood in disbelief at the things they had written but didn't remember. Years of memories right at their fingertips that were as if they'd never happened. Next, they went door to door and found many similar patterns of clothing and family items, with none of the children knowing their origin. Yen Miao and Lady Pike stopped at a building, but the others kept walking. What about this house? Yen Miao asked. Alex looked at them oddly. What do you mean? Burned down a long time ago. No one goes in there since it's not safe. Yin Miao and Lady Pike looked at each other as they stood in front of the house that was in perfectly fine shape. Interesting. It's not only people but structures that this magic is changing your perception of. This building must hold some importance. We'll have to investigate it first thing in the morning. It was getting close to dinner time, and the legendary hero Yin Miao had agreed to share some stories of his adventures with the other children. As a surprise, he also brought his legendary adventuring gear, which the children had grown up with on the statues. Coming back from dinner, it was turning dark, and everyone felt a strange sensation over them, like singing creeping into the back of their head. The disembodied sound gave them pause, but without knowing more about it, they decided to sleep in the same room that night for safety. 
Lady Pike and Yen Miao took the beds, and the kids slept nearby on the floor. Shadow looked over to Alex. I don't like this feeling. Maybe we shouldn't sleep tonight? Not a bad idea. Let's take watch and make sure nothing happens. Yen Miao and Lady Pike need a good night's sleep so they can figure this out tomorrow. Unfortunately for them, the song made them both pass out, failed wisdom saves, and they woke up with a dull headache in the morning. They felt something was off, but everyone was accounted for in their party. Shadow, Alex, Mass, and Lady Pike. Shadow thought it was odd that Mass didn't take the other bed, but he quickly waved it away, as they'd all camped out on the floor many times over the years. Oh well, Shadow thought, let the investigation continue. They soon came to the town square again on their way to the odd house, and Alex paused. Why are there four statues? Weren't there only three heroes, Lady Pike? She looked at the statues as she responded. Sir Sam, Shoot, Gary, and... Yes, only three. I don't know who this tabaxi is. The headache grew stronger as they pondered this, before forcing themselves to move on. They arrived at the enchanted house and concentrated on the structure. Most were able to see through the illusion, successful wisdom saves, and all entered the house. They found a cellar door inside, and a vast tunnel that had been created from there. They came to a fork with three paths to follow. The freshest tracks seemed to lead to the rightmost path, and they followed. They soon came across statues along the tunnel. They didn't recognize them, but upon examination, Lady Pike and Alex could detect an evil magic surrounding them. And much like the Gultheus tree curse the children originally sought help for, Lady Pike believed the source of the curse needed to be broken before they tried to unpetrify the people. They came to one last statue of a tabaxi, similar to the one in the town square and where the fresh tracks stopped, and beyond was a larger cavern. After a few minutes of investigating, things tried to grab them from the shadows. Trying to piece everything together, they decided to stuff their ears with gauze from their medical kit, perhaps a reason why Miss Rosie was the only survivor due to her being deaf. Instantly, a rumble was felt, and across the cavern as the creatures knew the threat had become serious. A glorious battle ensued, with each hero wasting no time in dealing out deadly blows. Lots of lucky wisdom saves from the false Hydra's dominant monster, and massive damage rolls, and stuns from Monk Shadow. I tried to ramp up the difficulty for it, but man, there were some seriously great rolls. When the final blow was struck, the false Hydra shrieked in pain as a dark purple energy began to bubble like fire from its body. Its final death throw sent the dark energy out in a blast wave that knocked the heroes over. Each passed out for what seemed like ages as their mind began to dig through memory after memory, repairing itself to put back in those who had been stripped over the last several years. The heroes awoke, turned to each other. We remember everything. They ran through the tunnels to find their families as Lady Pike cast Greater Restoration to free Yen Miao from his latest prison. They were going to need all the resources at his disposal to free the nearly 200 villagers from stone. False Hydra may be one of the coolest creatures in D&D. Please let us know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Our videos are posted every Tuesday and Friday, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.